Welcome to Gamer Station's Browser Games of the Week for the week of March 19th. And I'm your host, Steven Snake Eaker Lindsay. And I'm sorry that this is a day behind, but I was sick yesterday and I'm still not feeling 100%. But here's this week's Top 10 Browser Games of the Week. At number 10, Classic Hashi Light Volume 1. Now, if you never played any game similar to this one, then the odds are you won't know what to do and you'll be easily confused. But as soon as you learn the rules to the game, this game becomes really easy that really anyone should be able to do it. The rules are this. There are several numbers on the board, and what you're supposed to do is connect the lines from one number to another number. And the lines between these numbers must equal the number that's on that balloon. Now, there are multiple ways to connect from number to number, but there's only one correct way. And... Usually, more often than not, it's easy to figure out. Number 9, Demon Room. Now, I don't think I've ever had to say this about any game that's on our list. I think this game is kind of bad and cheesy, but in a good way. Mainly, this applies to the full motion videos they have at the beginning and the end of the game. You are Exorcist Joe who must exorcise a demon that someone has summoned because he thought he would help him, I guess, clean his room. Now, I'm not a professional on demons, but I don't think most demons are willing to help out humans unless there's some sacrifice or they get some item or something in return. I really don't know. But anyways, this game is the usual point-and-click affair, but this one is a lot more similar to kind of the Myst style of games than other ones. Now, there are three similar rooms in this game, which... When you first play it, you probably won't realize. And each of these rooms have different locations of objects. And also, you have to figure out the new piano puzzle. Trust me, that piano puzzle isn't hard as long as you watch the videos. Now, there are multiple endings to obtain in the game, but I always get the same one for some reason. But there is a downside to the game. You can't skip the cutscenes, even on a second playthrough. Also... The cheesiness of the game may not appeal to everyone, perhaps just only me. <laughs> Number 8, Choo Choo Puzzles. This is a simple to learn game, and it's not similar to Choo Choo Rockets in any way. What you're supposed to do is slide the red pieces to the end of the level in the fewest amount of moves. Now, more often than not, more or less on all the levels, there'll be other colored pieces that are in your way. And of course, you gotta move them out of the way to get the red piece to the end and all in the fewest amount of moves. Now, this game is really fun and challenging. Unless you're like me and you suck at this game and never can really get good scores. Yeah. Now it's time to take a look at a game that we missed that we really should have recommended about two weeks ago. That game is Test Subject Blue. Now this is a game that involves controlling a blue enzyme that has been created by scientists after his failed experiment with creating a orange enzyme. This game is a puzzle platformer and, well, the controls for said platformer can be a little stiff or unresponsive at times, but it's not too bad that you won't be able to get through levels. There are 25 levels to get through, and though we missed it, we still recommend it. Okay, back to our list, starting at number 7, Distress Signal. Now, the story of the game involves you checking a distress signal when all of a sudden your ship is forced to crash land on a planet. The gameplay style is somewhat very similar to Metroidvania. You go from one place to find an object, then you go back to another place that you couldn't go in before, then you get a new object and it repeats until you get to the end. But this game does have some annoying old school elements, such as enemies can shoot through walls, which should be able to be fixed in this time period, and sometimes these enemies that can shoot through said walls are tightly packed together so it's almost impossible to not get hit by one or two of them. Also, there's an annoying instant kill element that I've found. That's this barrier right here. When making it impassable would just be as convenient. Why do I have to die for going into a barrier? Or why can't I just get harmed? Also, it would have been good if you had a gun. Especially considering that some enemies can fire from a distance or the only way to really even hit them 
is if you do have a gun. So why couldn't this have been in the game? But it's still fun to play even though I do have all of those gripes. Number six, the squirrel game. Now this is another runner type of game that is similar to Cannibal. Anyways, throughout the run you can collect acorns and this gives you a dash move that allows you to destroy obstacles. Now there's both a story and the endless mode that you can choose from. But the story mode is a little on the short side. Only six levels and they're not that long. Maybe a minute or two for each level. And also, why exactly does a dragon and a UFO chase a squirrel? I mean, can't they chase other people instead? So it might be more worthwhile. Anyways, there's no real new elements in this runner game, but it is fun to play. We're halfway through our list, and that means it's time for our classic browser game of the week. And our pick for this week is Sama Rost. I don't know if I pronounced that right. This is a simple point and click game that involves no inventory or dialogue at all, so you don't have to worry about that for once. Now, this is from the people that brought us Machinarium, Amita Design. Now, this involves our hero trying to avert a planet from crashing with his own planet. Now, there's also a sequel that is out, but to get the full experience for the sequel, you have to purchase that one. Not that much, but still. Back to our list at number 5, Chisel 2. Now, this game is all about the drilling of rocks. So, what you do is jump from rock to rock, drill through, maybe destroy an object or enemy depending on what type they are, but the main problem is there doesn't seem to be any real motivation to continue playing. It's all too easy and simple to just win a level. Just drill and drill till you get a certain amount of quota that you need, then you beat the level. <sighs> but it is still enjoyable to play. Number 4, Reincarnation A Taste of Evil. Now I must say, I'm a huge fan of the Reincarnation series, and I can't wait to play the next game in the series every time I hear any news about it or there's a long break between them. But this is another short, which really isn't the biggest deal to me, but this doesn't seem like the best game in the series, even of the short. I think it's in the lower half of the games. Maybe that's because it's not as complex, it's a little easier, because maybe the misdeed of the reincarnate just doesn't seem as evil as some of the other ones for some odd reason. But with that said, this is still a good point and click game that everyone should play. Just if you're a huge fan of the reincarnation series, it may not stack up to the rest of them. Number 3, Zombies in the Shadow, The Savior, Act 1. Yes, this is another zombie apocalypse dual stick shooter with RPG elements in the story. You control a soldier who's trying to find his family and has been forced to find a general in the area as well because if he doesn't agree to do that, then he can't find his family, so you've got to help find the general. Now, the voices in the game are good, though I did find that some of them sounded similar. I don't know if it's the same voice actor or not, or the director just chose some people that have very similar voices. Anyways, some of the emotions for the characters could use some work. It's not really horrible, it just sounds a little off. People are a little bit too happy or in control when they really shouldn't be. Also, I found it weird that you could shoot down doors, but somehow those locked ones couldn't be shot sure down. I mean, if you can shoot down a door and it's closed, I doubt a tiny little lock at the handle is going to really matter. I could be wrong, but what, maybe you need to shoot it one more time? Alright, and it's time to look at a fun time killer. Katamari Hack. It's Katamari in your browser. Now, this creates a Katamari ball in your browser that can collect an assortment of stuff that you see on screen. Now, I find it really hard to consider this a game. It's more of an app or a toy or something like that. But I'm recommending this because it's fun to play and it's fun to waste time with it. Back to our list at number two, Fleet Fighter. Now, this game actually came out last week on a different site that we usually don't check. But since it came out on Newgrounds this week, we're using a loophole to say that it came out this week. 
as in saying that we're liars. This is an online multiplayer battleship game that features power-ups and unlockable characters as well. And this game feels surprisingly faster than most normal battleship games. Maybe because you have to shoot in a quicker amount of time. Maybe because usually after you fire, they fire, then you fire, and it's a quick back and forth. It's more of a shooting type game than a strategy game. Or maybe it has something to do with those power-ups as I mentioned earlier. But this game is surprisingly quite addictive and fun, especially for a battleship game. And the only real reason you probably won't like this game is if you really don't like Battleship at all. And our number one browser game of the week for this week is Cardboard Box Assembler. So after a hard day of boxing boxes, our hero has snapped and he now thinks he's inside of a box and it's a puzzle game. Now this involves some clever little puzzles that involve your character moving around a cube to get to objectives. I know that may not sound all that clever or anything, but when the gravity of those cubes change depending on where you enter and exit, then it becomes a little more thought provoking, and some of these can be really quite challenging and hard to figure out. Anyways, during some of these levels you can collect gems, which will unlock some bonus levels which are, of course, harder than the normal ones. On the negative side though, some collision with certain collectible objects be a tad bit off, but it really wasn't all that bad. And with that, this week's Browser Games of the Week list comes to an end. Now if you don't know, each and every Sunday, outside of rare occurrences like this week, we'll have a new Browser Game of the Week video up. And also on Wednesdays we have our Gamer Station Indie Game News, which is where we tell you about some of the latest happenings in the indie game world. So subscribe to us to be up to date on all of our videos.